It's potato time in Collin County. Hi, I'm Tim with Shades of Green Nursery and Landscape in Frisco, Texas. Mid to late February is when most people in Collin County plant their potatoes. Now that is a two-step process. The first thing you want to do is take your seed potato and cut it into smaller pieces. Then you want to lay those on a newspaper for about three or four days and let them heal up. Once that's done, then you can plant them in the ground. Today, we're going to do step one. All you need to do is take your seed potato and cut it top to bottom and left to right. Any standard kitchen knife will be fine. I'm just going to cut right through this. And then cut. And you can see that being a fresh potato, these are wet and slimy. If I put that in the ground right away, these have a tendency to rot. So we're going to leave them here on the newspaper, just like this, for about three days, and then they're going to heal up and they'll be perfect for going in the ground. So, as you can see, this is nice and healed up. I got kind of a leathery thing happening on the skin. The underside is no longer slimy, and I got a little eye here. These are ready to go in the ground. In fact, it's more than ready to go in the ground. I normally try to plant these between four and six days after cutting them and putting them out on the newspaper so they can heal up. But this year, we had a week of bitterly cold winter weather along with four inches of snow. So this is the first opportunity I've had to get out here and get them in the ground. So, all we have to do is dig a hole about three or four inches deep. I'm going to place them in the hole with the eye pointing up. And then cover them with some loose soil. I've already added a balanced organic fertilizer to this. All I need to do now is add a little water. So, let's head back to the studio and I'll give you some more information. You want to plant your potatoes three to four weeks before last frost. And, and Collin County, that is mid-March, March 15th to March 17th, depending on what website you're referencing. I try to get them in the ground the week after Valentine's Day, unless we have snow or ice or frost, and then you might have to wait a bit longer. You also want to use certified seed potatoes from a trusted garden center or a feed store, because unless you know they're organic, spuds from the grocery store have been treated with a growth inhibitor to prevent them from sprouting in your pantry. Now, as far as sunlight, potatoes need full sun. Anything less than six hours of direct sun will result in poor yields. Eight hours of sunlight is better. Good drainage is critical. It's always easier to add water when needed than to get rid of excess water. You can grow potatoes in raised beds, flower pots, buckets, or even bags. Potatoes planted in the ground and our heavy black clay here in Collin County can become waterlogged during heavy rains. If that happens, they can rot and you could lose the whole crop. As we've shown, you're going to cut your seed potatoes into smaller pieces and lay them out on a piece of newspaper to dry for four to six days. Doing so will prevent them from rotting when you plant them. And you want to make sure that each piece has at least one eye. You want to plant your pieces 10 to 12 inches apart and 3 to 4 inches deep. And be sure that you do not plant into wet, soggy soil. I like to leave my pieces outside the night before I plant to help the seed piece and the soil be about the same temperature. When it comes to fertilizer, you want to fertilize with a balanced fertilizer at the time of planting or a few days prior when preparing your bed. Now that balanced fertilizer is usually some type of organic. If you use a chemical fertilizer, a 15-5-10 is a good choice. I prefer organics, so I use Garden Tone from Espoma, which is 3-4-4. If it's a new bed, you could use Biotone Starter Plus, which is 4-3-3. Again, the three to the four, all your organic fertilizers are going to be pretty close in the, on their numbers and they're typically going to be on the low end, but I prefer organic, so this is what I use. You're going to fertilize again when the plants are about four inches tall and again when they are six to eight inches tall. As the plants grow, you'll want to mound up the soil at the base of the plant. All the potatoes that a potato plant will produce are going to be formed above the seed piece that you planted. Therefore, a little mounding will produce a larger yield. As the potatoes grow, some might breach the surface and be exposed to sunlight. When this happens, they'll turn green and become inedible. The best thing to do for this is when the plants are about eight to 10 inches tall, apply a thick layer of mulch. That'll prevent any from breaching the surface 
and will also give you a larger yield. Potatoes produce very pretty flowers, and once your plants are in full flower, you can harvest some of the new potatoes if you'd like. Simply dig into the soil gently at the base of the plant and pull out some of the smaller ones. They'll taste great. Like onions, potatoes will let you know when it's time to harvest. With onions, the tops will simply fall over when they're ready to harvest. With potatoes, the tops begin to die. So if your potatoes have been in the ground, say 100 days or so, and they start to look yellow or possibly sickly, they're probably not ill. They're just done and ready to be harvested. All you have to do is dig gently into the soil and pull them out. If you're growing them in buckets or pots, simply turn the bucket over or the pot over on its side and pull them out. Like onions, you'll want to let your potatoes dry out for a few days after harvesting. Simply place them in a cool, dry place with good air circulation. This will allow you to store them for a much longer period. And when it comes to storing potatoes, well, you should know how to do that. Put them in a cool, dry, dark place like the bottom of your pantry. Potatoes do have some pests that you need to be aware of. The most common is the Colorado potato beetle, also called a potato bug. Other unwanted pests include leafhopper, flea beetles, and aphids. All can be treated with 7-Dust, which is non-organic, or Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, which is an organic product. Always read and follow label directions. Potatoes are prone to several diseases. A fungicide is often the best treatment. The best prevention against disease is proper crop rotation. Do not plant potatoes in the same spot more than once every three years. Do not follow or precede potatoes with tomato, okra, pepper, or eggplant. Consistent soil moisture is key to healthy plants and a good harvest. You don't want to saturate the soil around your spuds, but also don't let the soil dry out completely between waterings. This will stress the plants and increase the likelihood of pest and disease problems. As for what varieties to plant, well, that's a personal choice, but Shades of Green carries three varieties that have proven time and time again to be great options for our soil and our climate. Red Lesota has a distinctive rosy skin and waxy white flesh that's tasty boiled, baked, or fried. It's a top choice for southern gardens. It's very reliable with great storage time and withstands cold, heat, and drought. You'll plant these three to five inches deep and 12 to 15 inches apart. They'll grow 24 to 36 inches tall and they'll be ready to harvest in 80 to 100 days. Yukon Gold is a very popular early potato. It produces a big, early, great tasting crop of yellow flesh spuds for baking or mashing. And it has a delicious, rich flavor. They are sprout resistant, uh, which means they'll last longer in your pantry. Plant three to four inches deep, 12 to 15 inches apart. They'll grow 24 to 36 inches tall and will be ready to harvest in 60 to 80 days. Most potatoes will take 80 to 100, sometimes 120 days for harvest. So with Yukon Gold coming in between 60 and 80, it's one of the earliest or fastest producing potatoes uh, that you can grow. Kennebec is a top all-purpose potato. Thin skins and smooth white flesh. The young tubers are tasty for creaming and full-size spuds are excellent for frying, boiling, mashing, or baking. Kennebec is just a great all-around potato. If you're not sure how you want to cook it or if you like cooking potatoes every way you can think of, uh, Kennebec is just the gold standard for all-around. It stores well. Again, you'll plant 3 to 5 inches deep, 12 to 15 inches apart. They'll grow 24 to 36 inches tall, and they'll be ready to harvest in 80 to 100 days. So there you have it. Potatoes are one of the most popular vegetables, and they're not that difficult to grow if you know what you're doing. Hopefully, this video has helped in that regard. I'm Tim with Shades of Green Nursery and Landscape, and this has been the Shades of Green Show. Thanks for watching.